Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our session. We wanted to thank Cognitive Approaches for First Generation College Students. I hope you're all staying cool as this weather gets a little hotter in this May. Um, this panel will present our experiences working to provide equal higher education to those populations of young adults across the country who are deemed most at risk for the pitfalls of contemporary society. Through their work, three, uh, one professor will demonstrate how first-year engagement is enriched through increased blended learning access tools, such as non-traditional gaming, webinars, mobile applications, student advising, tracking software, and more. The panel is from Smith College, is Professor Katrina Collins. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to just introduce myself again. I'm Katrina Watterson. Um, I'm from Louisiana. I spent many years there teaching, but I've been in, uh, at Johnson C. Smith University in Charlotte, North Carolina for the past three years. I'm assistant professor of Spanish. And uh, let's see what other hats you got there. Uh, aside from several committees, I'm also the, um, the coordinator for the uh, foundation's assessment for languages. That. And I work mostly with freshman students who are kind of caught between high school and college, and it's a bit challenging getting them to actually cross over into the college, uh, the college side. So, um, how many higher ed professors or instructors do we have? All right. Uh, do we have any other level teachers, instructors? Who doesn't teach it all? Okay, what do y'all do? Educational technologies. Educational technologies, okay. Instructional technologies. Okay, okay. Anybody ever work at the lower levels? Okay, high school? K-5. K-5, oh wow. Which do you prefer, K-5 or higher ed? Mm -hmm. It's hard to decide. It, it is. What's the hardest thing about the K-5? Uh, in my case, it was teaching how to learn, but I guess some of that could be a higher level. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> teaching how to learn. That's interesting. Okay, now, if you look at the title of this, of this session, the key word or the word that jumps out at you is what? What's that, what's that what you would call points to probably a million dollar word? Metacognitive. Meta had you heard of that before today? Mm -hmm. Kind of sort of. I see a few that are going no, and I see up some going okay. And uh, it's funny that that Dr. Lee uh, Marsha, who was initially supposed to be presenting with me today, we always laugh because we struggle to really grasp the meaning of that word. And no matter how many times we meet with the dean and we have all of these these sessions. We still stretch, scratching our heads sometimes to try and get to the bottom of what it means. But in a nutshell, um, it goes back to what he just said a minute ago. Uh, the understanding or the awareness of the student to know how they learn, okay? Different people learn different ways. And it's, been, it's becoming more and more of a challenge now. Uh, we teach at an HBCU or historically black college predominantly African-American college. And the, the student enrollment in general has fallen a lot over the years, okay? And we're trying to get to the bottom of that. Uh, passing rates or failure rates are, are, kind, of, are kind of affecting uh, what, what we do. And of course we want to know why. And the reason isn't always because students are not capable or they don't have the knowledge. It's just that some of them have a different way of learning. Okay, and that's what we want to tackle. Now, my field specifically is Spanish. I teach the elementary level Spanish courses. How many of you know some Spanish, took some Spanish, remember a little bit of Spanish? Who's never had Spanish? Oh, wow. Okay, so we're about half and half. We're about half. The Spanish hard is how did, how did it go for you? It's easier than what you like. Easier than Latin. 
It is easier. What what did you say back here in the back? Easier than Japanese. Oh, yep. okay. See, I've never attempted Japanese, but Japanese scares me when I look at it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to assume you're right about that. Okay, now, so we we kind of touched on metacognition, the overall meaning of that term. Um, so we want to look at ways uh, that we can approach these students who learn differently. Uh, some other some other key terms you might want to think about are traditional versus non-traditional teaching. Um, another very important aspect or key term is going to be um, <coughs> is going to be strengths-based pedagogy. Strengths-based pedagogy. <coughs> Thinking along the lines of lecture, think along the lines of um, what the students are good at, what your students like. Now, when you think about your students, what are some of their interests? What what really gets them going? You have a thought. What are your students like? You still thinking? Anything but school. <laughs> Anything but school. Um, Facebook. 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 What they need to get a good grade. What they need to get a good grade. I just want an A, or, or some of them have even lowered their standards there. I just need a D. <laughs> uh, Hands on the stuff. Okay. All right. So yeah, it depends on the student body. How about your students? Well, I think with first gen students, it's it's how who can I be successful? Mm -hmm. Is this class design, you know, probably not putting it exactly that way, but mm -hmm. does it give me the feeling like the instructor is gonna meet me where I am? Right. However, the students think about that. Right. They have so many other things to, to worry about. I mean, I was a first-gen student. His dad, his family, his, his, they're trying to make it. Coming up the whole time I've been in the conference, all day yesterday, so that's very important. Okay, now uh, with all of these things in mind, I've given some thought to addressing my students, approaching my students. Now they are elementary level Spanish, like like I said. Uh, <coughs> what I want to talk about or focus on is something that pretty much goes on in every class, but you may see it just occasionally, okay? And I'm thinking that it needs to be brought to the forefront. It's my goal to include it in possibly every lesson, okay? That aspect of teaching and learning is gonna be games, okay? Today we were talking about games <laughs> and a different aspect. It's work, but it's not working work. <laughs> <laughs> Not working work. They're working, but they're they're playing and learning while they work. They're practicing while they work. Okay, because they want something that they don't want someone who's going to stand up there for the 50 minutes or the hour and a half and just talk. Okay, if you do that, they're just going to be like you said, Snapchat, Facebook, and, and all of those things. So we want something that's going to that's going to cause them to turn all of that off and focus on what they need to work. Okay, now. Games. I guess you're asking, well, games, but aren't they adults if they're if they're going into, into the freshman year or higher age? Aren't they too old or aren't they too mature? That's what I was thinking too. After you dealt with them a day or so, you're gonna be like, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but think of it this way: that there are a lot of advantages to games. 
Number one, you can reach pretty much any age group or any grade level of games. Okay? Think about some games you like to play. I bet some of you still like to play games, don't you, of some sort. Okay? From the time you're real small till the time you're much older, games are not only not only for entertainment, but they can be used to help you to learn a particular topic. Okay, practice. Now in Spanish it's subject verb and freedom. That's as hard as it gets. If you get that, then you pretty much have the you 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 caught on to the lifeline of the language. And that's where most of them struggle. Subject verb and freedom. The rest you have, you have some culture, you got some vocab or some words. So you can easily tie that in. Now I want you, while I'm doing this presentation, I want you to apply this to your subject. Okay. I'm going to come back later and ask you what are you getting from this or what are you, what are you taking back that you can apply to your subject too because I don't want this to be uh, me up here talking about Spanish and it's all Greek to you and has nothing to do with you. I don't, I don't want that to happen. So I want you to think along the way of how you can incorporate some of these games into your own lessons for your own students. Okay? Now, let's give you something you can take this is my gift to you you can take it home and keep it something to think about when you are determining Okay, so now that we've got you to understand uh, the importance of games, the good use of games, the purpose of games, let's look at the guidelines that you want to further think about. Okay. Read for me number one. Uh, clear the main objective and main purpose. All right. Simply, what are you trying to teach them? Okay. What are you trying to get them to understand? You always want to play with a purpose. Okay. Don't play just to be played. Always have a subject matter tied into whatever game you're going to play. Students. Okay. Number two. Number two. Carefully formed teams. Carefully formed teams. What what do we have to think about when we're putting students together? Personalities. Uh huh. Personalities. Personalities. That's a good one. And I wasn't even thinking that right now. Uh huh. Personalities. You don't want to put all the you don't want to put all the loud mouths together. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that to happen. You don't want too much of one of one characteristic. Okay. Now, also and the main thing, don't put all your top students together. Yeah. Don't put all your lower students together. Last time I played a game, let's see, this was a few days before finding, and. This particular, let's see, there were, there were a couple of others, but there was this one young lady in pairs, that's what it was. This young lady was like BC student. This young man was like DF student. I'm like, okay, she'll probably go with me. She didn't know anything. <laughs> in, that, in that game, she just totally lost it all. So I, I got it wrong with that one, but uh, I don't know, maybe it was just it was just a nerve or whatever. When I was given an eye, she would freeze up. Okay. All right, number three, number three, number three. Explain all rules and procedures. All right, let them know what they're going to be doing. Let them know what they are going to be, uh, what the object of the game is. Okay, number four. Be consistent. Be consistent. Be consistent. Don't change the rules once the game starts. It's almost like cheating. Okay, number five. Number five. Be prepared. Be prepared. 
have all your little your little items and whatever you're going to use in place. Okay, it falls apart, and once you get them started, something's missing. Okay, and then you have uh, behavioral issues sometimes, and you have that in college too. Uh, you have them venturing off into other things, and you don't want that to happen. So be prepared so you can keep them focused. All right, what about number six, Jim? Maintain a non threatening environment. Oh, so important. So important. Okay, that's what that's why breaking the ice is so important. Okay, what's the last one? Okay. Of course. Of course. Don't be a good student you like all the things, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because they will call you out on it if they even think you're doing that. Yes. So uh, very, very simple guidelines, but very important guidelines. All right, good game characteristics based again on the learning objectives. Doable challenges. Now, make it a challenge, but don't put it too far out of their reach. Don't go beyond what they're able to do. Okay? Enjoyable and interesting to students. That's one of the main points. That's one of the, the main reasons you want to set up your game. Okay, you're going to find that students are the most engaged when they are in what you would call game mode. Okay, reality based. They have to see the point in what they're doing. They have to see that what they're doing is matter is going to matter or that it counts for something. And it allows students to interact. Okay, they're interacting with, with each other. It's always said that students learn better from each other than they learn from the person in show. Okay, and I think some of you have already said it's easy to discover that. Easy to discover that. And even better, even better than that, you need to learn from the students too. So you want it to be a learning, a learning uh, experience all the way around. Okay, now, uh, so now you're probably wondering, okay, so what kinds of games can we play? What are we going to do now that we have all these advantages of playing games? Well, if you start, uh, you can think of some of the games that you like to play. Maybe some games you still play. What are some of your favorite games? Jeopardy. Jeopardy. For, for teaching purposes. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can think about even before you were teaching, though. You can go back to thinking about games you played when you were little. Scrabble. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Give me some more. Oregon Trail. Oh, yeah. That's a new one to me. Oregon Trail. Computer based. Okay. It's really fun being diagnosed. It's really fun. It's education. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to check that one out. That. It raises the question of what's a game. You know, like, like civilization or uh -huh. monopoly when, they, when there's so much sort of infrastructure for it. There's, there's a difference between that, right? Uh -huh. And then something simple like, uh, you know, like cards. Or or I remember war being a game that I loved, and there's zero preparation for that. You know, I was what five years old. That was a terrific game. But it's a real different than what, civilization or uh, World of Warcraft or something like that. Mm -hmm. well, I've got a, a biology instructor who uses pandemic to you know, mm -hmm. teach his pathogenic um, uh, disease. And, um, the, Students will get into groups and they have to figure out how to contain this pathogen in that game. Okay, yeah. Sim City is a, it's an example of a that I'm going to In Minecraft as well, we play against the person. So, yeah, <coughs> Jeopardy Scrabble. 
those are very common too in foreign languages. The point I was getting at was you can pretty much Spanish Spanish size even the games that you already enjoy. Okay, now there are some other games I'm going to get to that are pretty recent, fairly new games that were pretty much, I guess you can say, born in the Spanish class. But we're going to still think, I want you to still think about ways that you can apply that. Now, I'm going to here attempt to show you some examples uh, of some of these games that, um, that we have always been familiar with that are uh, pretty much brought into the Spanish class to help students. Now, I have a couple of these. These are very young kids. The second one I'm going to show you are, are much older adult students, uh, college level mostly, freshman students. So I want you to look here <coughs> at the way this game is set up. And this is bingo. And it's really, it's really a neat way to review vocab mostly. Okay, really simple. Now she is, don't know the oldest students as much as she's helping me. Okay, I want you to look at, she, she's helping them too, but they're, they're, they're really smart though. They, they pretty much, they pretty much have the hang of it. She's just, she just has that nurturing spirit. But, um, apply it to the age group. Okay, okay, let's do it. Okay. No. <laughs> no, Congo. Okay. 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 Okay.
the games that are here, now I apologize for not getting the chance to videotape and YouTube these before I came, but uh, we can go through, let's see, the main points. They're pretty easy to understand. Now, number three is going to be one of my favorites. El Juego de Puerto, the running game. Okay? Where basically you have two teams, you have each person with a number on the team, and those with the same number, you give them a word and they run to the board and like the word in Spanish. You're the one who gets the French <coughs> Very simple, very simple. Again, good review of key terms. Now, trash ball is going to get pretty crazy if you do this one, uh, especially among the sports enthusiasts. Okay? Because they get to kind of like play just like basketball and take a free shot in basketball. Don't let them run all around the room. Free shot in basketball. So basically, all you do it is if they answer a question and earn the point, you set distances with point values from where they can shoot and earn an extra point. You see the name for Okay, okay, yes. I think you get some ideas back there. That's good. That's good. Yes, but like I said, the sports enthusiasts are going to go crazy. Okay? The basketball, the basketball. Okay, uh, let's see, word sentence puzzle game. I play this one a lot. I play this one a lot. Let me do just one play. Okay. Forgive me a little. L. All right, but do you know what the word is? <laughs> I know what the first word is. <laughs> don't say it. Don't okay. say it. Okay, give me a letter. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what the first, first word is, too. Okay. All right, give me a letter. Uh, no S is a problem. Okay, give me a letter. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's come down here. Let's say, give me a letter. All right, can you get it? No? It's too soon for you? All right, behind Jose, give me a letter. T. No, no T. Everybody calls T on your fortune. It's like the first letter they call. All right, give me a letter. Hey. Not that time. Okay, give me a letter. R. No, that's another one of those common consonants I'm real fortunate that I've never made. Okay, give me that. I. Okay. Okay. Now you can you can get the time in right now. Okay. Uh, you can have a buzzer if you want. I've been trying to get a buzzer for a while. I want I want to run it like they have in the video. I saw that I don't have to do it because I've been thinking about getting a buzzer. I really need one. Okay, uh, okay, right here in the back. Um, so give us a letter. J. Uh, not quite. <laughs> okay, she went one of the odd letters. Okay, give us a letter. H. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do this right now. <laughs> All right, so she says El Chico, and most likely I'll give her a point for solving the puzzle, and then I'll give her an extra point for telling me that El Chico is what? What's El Chico? You don't know who Chico is? I don't know if I'm sure. she does. The way she said that word with such confidence, I was just so sure she knew it. <laughs> Y'all know what an L2 is? That's a guy. That's a guy. Yeah, it's a guy or a young man. Huh. Guy or a young man. Okay, most of the most of the guys in your class are gonna be chicos. Okay, the hombres are the openings. but the chicos can be hombres too. Doesn't always matter which one you call them, especially when it's at least the coaching belt. Okay, um, the one by the asterisk I want us to do together. Around the world, pretty simple. You just put two students together, uh, one answers the question, the one who gets it wrong sits down, and the one who wins moves on down to the next and uh, challenge each other like that. Sparkle, uh, finally, y'all, helps them to practice spelling. 
spell. Okay, you can line the students up. Uh, you give a word. They spell it one by one. The one who gets it wrong automatically is out. Now, at the end of the word being spelled correctly, the next student just says for one word. And feel free to change any of these uh, these structures you want as you wish. You know, this is your classroom, your games. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. Okay, now, the word sentence card game. You can do it with words or you can do it with sentences. I'm going to, uh, for our last activity here, put you in teams now. I don't, let's see, I don't know who's on the team, so I'm going to get more than you do this. Um, might be all the top students together, all the bottom students. Let's see. Well, let's see how many we have. Okay, we got 13. Okay, so I'll probably have the 13th person. Um, we got 13, we have 12. So we can do three teams of four. And I'm not going to make all of them. See if you're close by and see if you, you can come over here and uh, I'm going to let you read the sentences. Uh, you four here, y'all can stand together. Okay, you can join these three here. Can you four stay together? Y'all in the best spot for what I'm going to do. The wicked loves up your own All right, three teams of four. Okay. Okay, now on your desktops, you all can spread these out amongst yourselves. Make sure everybody has some. Okay, spread these out amongst yourselves on your desktop. Make sure everybody has some. And spread these out amongst yourselves. Okay, now in the spread, while you're spreading them out, I want you to have I want you to have a spot for where you're gonna put what's gonna be your response. Okay, now you're gonna form a sentence, a sentence according to what's read. So have a place to put your answer. Once you determine where you're gonna put your answer, let me know. Now, okay. while you're wrapping up with getting your cards placed, <laughs> the object of this game is going to be to form the Spanish sentence according to the English sentence. Now, you want to do this quickly because you want to beat the other teams. Okay? Your response has to be exactly correct. All right, you can't have words out of place the way they should be. Um, once your team has your sentence, raise your hand. Okay, raise your hand. Huh? Everyone in the team raises their hand. No, well, at least one of <laughs> At least one of at least one on the team. So if you if you're the one who raises your hand once your team has it, then you represent the team and I come. Okay, now when you raise your hand. I'm going to come over and see what you have, okay? If it's correct, then you get the point. If it's not correct, then you're eliminated for that particular item and the other two teams have a chance to recover. Okay? All right, are we ready to try? Okay. Get it. Nice, thanks. Uh, good dogs run a lot. <laughs> Good dogs run a lot. All right, we have a winner here. Okay, this is team. This is team. Okay. All right, we got the first one in the back already. Oh, okay. All right. We'll try you. All right. Okay. Get ready for the second sentence. Okay. 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 This is for the second sentence. We're ready? Okay. We're ready. I sing in church on Sundays. Okay. Now. 
I don't think I need to finish the sentence in there.
uh, all of the enhancement. Like it just, it's, I want them to, to be engaged. And did you notice how you were learning from each other? You were working together without a device? I like that. I like that. Not everything has to be high tech. Okay. What else are you are you thinking? Yeah. That, means, that means inspired to go looking online tech for more games right. that I can play that would be site related or stats related or, or anything good. So there is a whole website called the for the blue games. Right. Blue games that was really that was inspired me to go looking for more fun. Exactly. So I'm not very fun. Exactly. You're not fun. No, no, you're not, you're not fun. fun. I'm not fun. Entertaining, but I'm not fun in that sense. So I need to loosen up a little bit with more games. What do you teach? Psychology. Oh, yeah, you can be done with psychology. That would fall in there. And then I'm putting it up to China. But don't hurt someone. Well, yeah, we want you to loosen up. We want you to do change of what she did. It's just how she did. Oh, she was excited about it. Okay, okay. What else can you uh, possibly think about in your own class or? With your own students, uh, what we just did. I had I like this before, but I teach a lot of computer programming, and I'm sure there are logic games out there or app games that I could use. I mean, I look for some. Mm -hmm. Yes, most definitely. Now, if you were to do this card game in this field, maybe with um, problems, equations, or whatever you do. Something well, even even if even if yeah. it's just the response of the answer. Yeah, I mean, if there's it's, it's language that it's computer language, so yeah. I'm sure I could adapt some of it even language. Uh huh. Because this game we just did, I also do. I also practice with that one with the alphabet. I'll say the letter, the first one, the raise the letter. This one, it can be words. So there are so many different ways you can do it. Okay. One more, anybody else? So, the instruction is acknowledging that you're going to a class and help students learn the same tool for the students or something. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think I've been inspired rather than just being talking about the same thing. Many of the skills that I've developed is from teaching at the class. So, maybe putting it more fun for the senior team. Most definitely. Most definitely. You're a quiet student. You're a quiet You don't talk to me. Well, you're always a quiet student. Really? I work with these individual students, and I can put you into something and think through uh, creative ways to get them up and do online games and get them into the uh, computer level curriculum for them to have a nice time for their own individual learning. Now, like I said in the beginning, I do intend to YouTube some of the games I'm going to be playing my students. So, uh, be on the lookout. Um, What's this, your YouTube channel? This whole, I haven't done all of it yet. But this whole notion of um, games as pretty much central activity or uh, one of making it one, one of the main the main points in your lesson is going to be especially more popular in the language classes and uh, possibly it's going to be in other subjects too. So start thinking about making it making it more fun because students they like fun they like interacting working together uh, it engages them. So yeah, just just think along those lines. Think along those lines and. I'm going to put my email address just in case you want to send me a message, you got an idea, or you got a question. I'm always open for ideas. Does anyone have any questions for me? Uh, I was just sort of wondering, because I think at the very beginning you said that one of the hardest things to learn about standards was subject for agreement. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, you know, related to that, what 
feeling for the um, most you know, effective reason for that. Now, the one you just gave was perfect um, because, in a sense, and sentences terrify students. Mm -hmm. They can learn a list of words, vocab, they can learn verbs, A or E or I or how to conjugate. And in a sentence, for a complete sentence, and, and you have to understand by complete sentence, I have to tell them that complete doesn't always mean a long sentence. You tell them they're a complete sentence, they're going to throw all kinds of stuff in there. But a complete sentence, you have a subject, you have the verb, which is formed according to the subject, and then you have maybe another vocab word. They don't realize that. You say sentence, they're like, oh, you, they think you want them to do something they've never done before, but all you're doing is putting together what you just learned. And the sentence game, this card game you just did, is the perfect example. You notice when you were saying, what was it, she dances well, you had your subject, which was a, you had your regular AR, by law, which was formed according to Ada in the third person, by law, and then you had the adverb being. So this is pretty much taking them through a little bit of everything in that in, in that uh, in that structure in all the structures that they dealt with and in that you do have some verbs. Did y'all see that? So that particular game, that's why it's one of my favorites. And it kind of helps them to little by little gain confidence with sentences. And normally at the end, um, any corrections that they get, uh, that they want to see, or that they want you to make, be able to. So yeah, the second game is perfect. Even with this game, the puzzle game, those can be sentences as well. You can do that. And again, if you want to say El Chico es guapo, yeah. And so, if I add S and then guapo, that's a sentence. So yeah, you can you can incorporate the sentences with the subject verb and bring it into the answer. Question. Well, could you speak a, a little bit about um, sort of how you structured, say, this exercise mm -hmm. today in your class? That is, you would have started off with a. Would your learning goal have been just enhancing the ability to, to do the verb subject? Okay, agree with right, right. And then how would you have grouped people? So how would you have avoided a situation where <laughs> you got one person in the group who's asking all the questions to the rest of us? Right? Right. And then what kind of closure would you have done? Would you would you would you tell us, you know, would you force us to face the fact that we learn more, or would you just want us to sort of reflect on that uh, ourselves? Definitely reflect, um, like like I was saying a minute ago, um, the responses can be discussed at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, any structures that they, that throughout the course of that game, they weren't catching on to can be addressed mm -hmm. uh, after. But usually by the time we're playing this game, they're expected to know, basically, uh, after going through the introductory lesson, they, they put it into practice so by then. Usually, uh, for the most part now, the games I use as practice of reinforcement usually before a test. Uh -huh. uh, if you want to think about how you're going to reward them, what I do is points that they get like this usually can be extra points for the test. Now, that's one thing. Uh, sometimes I give them. Uh, some other kind of sweet treat or whatever, something like that. So it just depends. But, like I was saying at the beginning, it's my goal to incorporate a game in every lesson. I'm trying to get to the point where um, it's it's interaction, it's a little bit of friendly competition, um, it, it gets them engaged and actively participating, and I want that not just on occasion, or not just sometimes, but on a more regular basis. And I think it's meeting the needs of those students who don't learn, like as you said back here, this, this lecture and uh, me, me doing all the talking. Getting them involved and engaged as soon as possible. I mean, it, it, it tends to stick with them a little bit better like that. Did that answer your question? Yeah. 
they gain more confidence with the sentences, which is what it did, like I said, with your terrifiers. This kind of helps them to gain more confidence with that, with that particular aspect. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Jeff. Yeah. 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 I was wondering, like, what the, this is the purpose of the videos to address the educational resources. Does it play a role in the class for you? Um, okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to video uh, just like I would come to class in a day and play a game, any one of these games. I'm going to I'm going to start the video. As, as just a new play. And uh, just to show everybody, because it was it was easily understood as I was explaining the games, but it's still, we want to still, uh, and it's not much out there right now as it is as far as actual in-class participation of all these games. So I want, I want to post it for everybody to see actually how these games work. That's very good. And research as well. There's a lot of research. Um, you, you, uh, research in terms of monitoring uh, student improvement with the games. Uh, you want to observe behavior during the games. Uh, being engaged, them staying on task. Okay? You could, you could see, even in the videos, from the small children to the adults, they were so, in, they were so engaged in what they were doing. They were, it, was, it was just like playing with friends, but they were learning at the same time. And they didn't have a PhD professor or some authority, authoritative figure just standing over them, you know, uh, only for the purpose of, of moderating, but not just you know, my, uh, not, not just standing over them and dictating to them and lecturing to them. But they pretty much did the lesson themselves by playing the games and, and learning in the process, learning together with, with, their, with their fellow students and their friends. Entertaining us like that guy was doing. It was so sick. I think every class has one. Every class has a class time. That reminded me of a question I wanted to ask. Do you, have, do you is it common for students to think students can do this because the games are like feel too childish for them? Like, does that because they don't let go, they don't they're not willing to let go and be a kid. Right. You have people that, refuse to that happen with older with the older kids and is that the point? Okay, now I've never had that happen, but I had a student come to me at the beginning of this semester. She's a New York native. She speaks Spanish almost like a like a native herself. And she came to me in the beginning and she said, I think this class is going to be too easy for me. I don't think I'm going to stick to it. She said, usually there's always something you can learn, you know. Even with the, even as English speakers, don't we forget how to spell some words? And mm -hmm. We forget if, 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 is it if I were or if I were. Things like that. So she stayed in the class. And as we got into, um, let's see, what, what topic we're we on reflexive verbs. You would have to, you have to see Spanish. It's a pronoun before it's just a verb. And she was really getting tripped up on that. Mm -hmm. She had a lot questions, she had a lot of concerns, so there was something she didn't really know how to do. And from there, for her, it became more of a learning experience and not, and not a matter of her being the world at all. You know? So, there's a, but one third, well, if you go to course numbers, 130, 131 is the, is the first course, 132 is the second course. They're both elementary level, but that second course is a lot more complex. The second course gets into different tenses. You got you got present tense, you got past tense. There are two past tenses, but we want to do it in one. And when they're talking between those tenses, it kind of gets tricky. But 
it ended up being a learning experience for her in addition to what feeling that she already knew. She knew she knew a lot too. She she was always doing it. And even even a fluent speaker is gonna find something within their own language that you know they didn't even understand in their brains. So I haven't had um it's elementary Spanish, but it's still something that they're trying to learn. It's not their own language. In, in other words, it really is foreign to them. So it seems like kids stuff, but when it's not their language, it is really something that they see they need to learn. So that that's the catch. I was just trying to think about how to frame some of the I'm anticipating. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Making some, it. Some uh huh. Making friend. it a little more complex for me. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to leave that to you because I wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're all out of time, but if you would like to give a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much for presenting.